people who could use a little bit of career insurance, Al Franken is gone. And he just came out and said, as I said, that he is innocent, that he didn't do any of these things, that all of these women are either liars or misconstruing his actions. It seems to me it's hard to misconstrue somebody grabbing your in the middle of a photo line. Um, but, you know, to each his own. So Franken uh, stepped down after the Democrats turned on him. They turned on him in the last 48 hours, really not because of the new reports about Franken, but because they wished to throw Republicans under the moral, uh, under the moral bus. That was the goal here. The, the pretext they used for throwing Franken out uh, was this uh, was this report from The Atlantic that tr that Franken had sexually harassed a woman at a Media Matters party. Uh, there's a woman named Tina DePoy who wrote for The Atlantic. She says, it happened at a Media Matters party during the first Obama inauguration. It was a great time to be a Democrat. Not only had we just elected the first African-American president of the United States, but Franken's race had triggered a recount, leaving leftist giddy. We would soon have a supermajority in the Senate. As you recall, Al Franken stole that Senate seat from Norm Coleman. They just kept recounting the votes until enough felons were counted that Al Franken was the senator from Minnesota. Uh, this woman writes, this is my first inauguration. I'd never been in the proverbial room where it happens. My experience with government at that point was being a ward of the court in foster care. Nothing that I had an interest in politics, noting that I had an interest in politics and in grandstanding. My foster dad set up an internship for me at the district office of Representative George Miller. The summer before my senior year of high school as an intern, I answered calls, thumbed through the congressional record, etc. She says, I've been married for two years at the time. I don't let my husband touch me like Al Franken did in public. Right, here's what she says. I saw Al Franken. I only bug celebrities for pictures when it'll make my foster mom happy. She loves Franken, so I asked to get a picture with him. We posed for the shot. He immediately put his hand on my waist, grabbing a handful of flesh. I froze. Then he squeezed at least twice. What a class act, that Al Franken. So Franken gave a statement in which he said, all of this has been misconstrued. He's totally innocent, but he's leaving anyway. And then he blabbered on for a while about activism and the wonders of activism. And again, he just kept calling them liars over and over and over, hoping that he would have another shot at this. That's what Al Franken is hoping. Al Franken is hoping that he leaves in quote unquote disgrace, that he does his penance, and then he comes back in a couple of years, having cleansed himself of the stigma of this. And in order to ensure that, he immediately wheeled and hit Trump and, and Roy Moore. Roy Moore, of course, the Senate Alabama Republican candidate, who's been incredibly accused of child molestation. Now, what's hilarious about all of this is watching the Democrats swing to push Franken out. So just a couple of days ago, we played the audio yesterday of Kirsten Gillibrand saying that she didn't know whether Franken should step down, he should really make his own decision. And then yesterday, she actually said Franken should step down. So she changed her opinion. Kirsten Gillibrand, who's been treated as a possible 2020 candidate, there is no better weather vane than Kirsten Gillibrand. I mean, there are no better weather vanes on planet Earth than Kirsten Gillibrand. And the woman has her finger in the air at all times, seeing which way the wind is blowing. She realized that she wanted the, the she realized the wind was blowing against Franken, so she stepped out in front of that and said Franken should resign. This is what she said yesterday. Well, obviously, there were new allegations today, uh, and enough is enough. I mean, this is a conversation we've been having for a very long time, and it's a conversation that this country needs to have. And I think when we start having to talk about the differences between sexual assault and sexual harassment and unwanted groping, you are having the wrong conversation. You need to draw a line in the sand and say none of it is okay, none of it is acceptable, and we as elected leaders should absolutely be held to a higher standard, not a lower standard. Well, that's a wild switch from Kirsten Gillibrand, who five seconds ago was saying that basically Al Franken might stay, but Roy Moore should go, and President Trump's a sexual abuser, but not Al Franken. This is all this is all a wild shift. I will say that the logic that's used here, that we have to lump all of this activity together, is a little bit disturbing to me. I don't think that Harvey Weinstein should be lumped together with Al Franken, and I don't think that Al Franken should be lumped together with, like, Clarence Thomas, who apparently made a crude sexual remark to Anita, to Anita Hill one time, or was alleged to have done so. Uh, th this does not seem to me that all of these things should be grouped together or pose equivalent threats to careers. Uh, some of these activities are truly horrifying, and your career should be ended, and you should end up in jail. And some of these activities are bad. You're a creep, but I'm not sure that it rises to the level of the of the same outrage as a Harvey Weinstein, for example. In any case, what this is really about for Democrats, and we all know it, what this is really about is seizing the moral high ground. What Democrats truly want to do here is not push out Franken because they care about Franken, not push out John Conyers because they care about John Conyers. They want to push all these people out so that they can turn and swivel and hit Donald Trump and Roy Moore. So Senator Maisie Hirono, the Democrat of Hawaii, she came out yesterday and she said, you know, now that Franken's going, you know, it'd be really great is if Trump and Moore stepped aside. And they say what Al Franken did was wrong, but it's not even in the same ballpark. Why take this step? And why not also be calling for President Trump and, and Roy Moore to step aside? 
Well, I would love it if both of them stepped aside because I have said publicly that, that President Trump has admitted to being a sexual predator. And as for Roy Moore, the credible allegations of him being a child molester, basically, um, it should cause both of them to look at themselves and step down. I would love it. But at the same time, you know, I'm looking for where are the Republican voices? Where is their outrage? In fact, on the opposite end, they're coming forward to support Roy Moore. How's that for a totally inappropriate position? So two things can be true at once. One, Democrats can be right to shove these people out the door, and Republicans should do the same with their own bad candidates. And two, this can be totally politically driven, because it is totally politically driven. I mean, there's no question about it. The fact is that the Democrats suffer zero repercussions for getting rid of Franken. The Democratic governor of Minnesota, Mark Dayton, is about to appoint his lieutenant governor. Uh, I can't, her name escapes me for the moment. Um, but he's about to appoint her, a Democrat, to fill Franken's seat so Democrats don't lose a seat in the Senate. Forcing out John Conyers means nothing because some relative of John Conyers will fill that seat. It's very easy to take the moral high ground when it doesn't mean actually sacrificing anything. Anytime Democrats have to think about sacrificing something, they rally around the flag of the sexual abuser the same way that Republicans are currently rallying around the flags of alleged sexual abusers. So there's no question that there's a bunch of hypocrisy going on on here uh, and a bunch of, uh, of political posturing. Bernie Sanders, another example, he came out yesterday, or this morning rather, and he said that Donald Trump and Roy Moore should both step down because Al Franken is going, earlier this week, Bernie Sanders was literally running away from the cameras when he was asked about Al Franken. So what's happened here is that the Democrats waited until the Republican National Committee and Trump re-endorsed Moore, and they said, here's our chance to draw a contrast. Now, is that smart politics? Of course it's smart politics. Now they get to claim that they have the moral high ground. And Republicans, meanwhile, are shoving the moral high ground away from them as fast as humanly possible. I mean, they're, they're taking that moral high ground and they are running from it as fast as humanly possible. So much so that you're actually seeing Republicans now come out and start to defend Al Franken. So last night on Laura Ingram's show on Fox News, Newt Gingrich was talking with Ingram, and both Gingrich and Ingram were actually defending Al Franken because they understand what's happening next, right? Here, here's the logic. Well, we're not going to let Trump and Moore go until you get rid of Al Franken. The Democrats say, fine, we'll get rid of Al Franken. Then the Republicans say, well, hold on. Hold up a second. Maybe you don't want to get rid of Al Franken. Maybe that's a bad idea to get rid of Al Franken. It's all political partisanship at its finest. Here's Gingrich with Ingram suddenly defending Al Franken, a guy who routinely grabs women by the butt in the middle of photo lines, apparently. Al Franken was a comedian. Comedians often do weird things. He was in the entertainment business. He was doing the kind of things people in the entertainment business do. Now, I have not, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see anything that they've said he's done since he was a senator. I don't think they've said... I tried to lose track. I think there are no, a couple uh, allegations of inappropriate but, but, conduct, but, but I think it's minor stuff. So. I mean, I mean, but the point is, we're in, we're in one of those weird American moments when running around lynching people feels, feels so good. good. Yeah, it feels, feels good. good to them. I mean, if you go back and you read, you go back and watch the YouTube of Clarence Thomas. I was just going to say my old boss. Yeah. You know how he felt. Explaining, you know, who, by the way, was wonderful and swore in Callista. Oh, great. Uh, great moment. And, you know, fellow Georgia and everything. Uh, but you go back and you look at what he said about an electronic lynching. And then you look at what we're saying. I mean, again, high tech. Conyers, high tech Conyers had a lot of good reasons to retire. Yep. But on the other hand, no hearings, no witnesses. No, there's no due process. If you're, if you're accused and you're a man, you're okay, accused. So, so here we are now, right? So here we are. We've got Laura Ingram and Newt Gingrich defending Al Franken. You think they're doing that because they really like Al Franken or they think Al Franken ought to get a fair shake? I mean, they were both calling for the prosecution of Hillary Clinton based on less evidence than Al Franken here. And Hillary Clinton, by the way, should have gone to jail. Okay, the idea that they are out defending Al Franken today, the only reason they're defending Al Franken is because they want to defend Roy Moore, obviously. That's what's going on here. And the Democrats are only throwing Al Franken under the bus because they want to get Roy Moore and Donald Trump. So understand, this is all a political game. Don't suddenly think that politicians grew moral spines. They didn't. Okay, I would be happy if they had, and maybe we can force them into doing so. But I don't really see the purpose of, uh, of pretending that there's no politics at work here at all, because that's just, that's just silly. Well, in a second, I want to play you what Al Franken actually had to say. But first, I want to, in her graduation yearbook, he dated her when she was 17 and he was 34, and there's a note in her yearbook. It says, happy graduation, Debbie. I wanted to give you this card myself. I know that you'll be a, uh, a success in anything you do. Signed, Roy. Why is this important? It's only important because the signature is precisely the same as the signature in the yearbook for the accuser who said that he tried to rape her when she was 16 years old. Now, there are a bunch of people online who are saying this is a forgery, too. It's all a forgery. Everything's a forgery. Okay, if you believe that, I have a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. And you, uh, I have a hard time believing 
that you think that Al Franken is guilty or Harvey Weinstein is guilty or Bill Clinton is guilty of Juanita Broderick. There's more evidence about Roy Moore here than there was about Juanita Broderick. And all the right believes Juanita Broderick, and most of the right does not believe the accusers in the Roy Moore case. That's because people cannot stand cognitive dissonance. And now the RNC has jumped in. So this was totally unnecessary. Roy Moore was probably going to win anyway, even if you wanted him to win. Roy Moore was probably going to win anyway. So they made the worst move possible. So the RNC withdrew its support last month, right, in, in light of the ongoing accusations. And now Breitbart, of course, gets the note from the RNC that, the, that they now, quote, stand with the president and that they are going to openly back Roy Moore in this election cycle. And as you say, the president apparently called up Roy Moore's office and he said, go get him, Roy. I only hope that he specified who the um was in that sentence, because otherwise that's super awkward. Go get him is not something you want to say to a prospective child molester. In any case, the RNC came out, and now they are saying that they are backing Trump's decision to endorse Moore. They're not the only ones. Uh, Orrin Hatch came out. He said Trump had no choice but to support Moore. Now, if you want to make the case again, that you have to support him to stop the Democrats because of the polarization, because Nancy Pelosi is a kook, because the Democrats have gone so far off the road that we just have to oppose them no matter what. If that's the case you want to make, then make that case. Okay, have the courage of your convictions and just say, yeah, the guy's guilty. I don't care. The Democrats are just as bad. Fine. Well, uh, right, just do that. Do that. Be honest. But that's not what people are doing. People are finding ways to loop themselves in pretzels to pretend that Roy Moore is actually an indicator of how great evangelical Christians are. He should be, a, he, he's the new Jesus and the pilots out there are trying, to, are trying to crucify him. It's just insane. It's just insane. And if anybody says differently, then they're raked over the coals. So Mitt Romney blasts Moore, right? Mitt Romney comes out with this tweet. He tweets, Roy Moore in the U.S. Senate would be a stain on the GOP and on the nation. I agree. I agree because I have a thing called long-term interests. I don't think it's good for the long-term interests of the Republican Party to have an accused, credibly accused child molester sitting in the United States Senate being used as a club to beat every Republican into submission. You think Trump was a club used to beat Republicans into submission in 2016? Okay, wait till they actually have a credibly accused child molester in the United States Senate, and you're a guy who's running for a contested seat in a contested purple state, like Virginia or Ohio or Florida, and suddenly so they ask you, do you think Roy Moore...